So if you wake up in the morning and your first thought is something like, oh, fuck, <laughs> this video is probably for you. Um, in response to my last video about anxiety at night, here is the video as requested about anxiety in the morning and working with our inner child to help that anxiety. Um, if you identify with having grown up in childhood trauma or the toxic family system, your mornings can look like any of the following, dread, chaos, overwhelm, low energy, suffering, and not feeling prepared or positive about the day. Like it's not, it's like mornings can be triggering and it's not like a chill experience. I'm Patrick and if you're new to me, welcome. If you find this content helpful, you can hit the subscribe button, the like button, the bell button. You can hit all the buttons if you want to. And if you find that this content is helpful to you in your recovery, you can support the work hours that go into this channel over at my Patreon. You can also check out my website to get a hold of me, to get in contact, as well as check out some childhood trauma e-courses that go more into depth about childhood trauma. And I'll have all the links to the stuff that I just talked about in the description of this video. So let's dive in. Here are two action items in this video to address this problem of morning anxiety. So I look at most things on a spectrum when it comes to childhood trauma or issues. And some of us grow up in neglect where we got ourselves dressed to school. We made our lunch and we were like six, which is way too young to be doing all that stuff. And some of us grew up in total stress and chaos where there was always unhappiness or disconnect. Um, maybe because our caretakers didn't really have it together. If you picture a moody parent or a stress monster parent or a hungover parent, children just experience deep shame and unhappiness through all of those experiences with them. So, and some of us may have had an overwhelming parent, like a hovering parent, a controlling parent that is way too, like, way too involved in their kids' lives in the, on the day to day. And that is such an energy drain. It's like, if you think about it, like an energy vampire parent. Um, you know, like, make sure you make friends today, double check your homework, you know, I can talk to your teacher if you need me to. Like, it seems like it's like really good parenting, but it can be really overwhelming where the kid is just overwhelming. So, or maybe like you're none of those examples and it's really, this exercise is really about trying to remember or come up with concrete ideas about what maybe mornings were like for you in say grammar school or adolescence or high school. And it's okay if you don't remember, if you think of the caretakers, um, like if you don't have the concrete memories of what it was like growing up, just think about, you probably have a good idea about who your caretakers were. And then you can kind of work backwards. Like if you had that parent that was very narcissistic, high, like high stress, type A, um, alcoholic, you know, moody, shut down, codependent. Imagine if that person was your roommate, that you had a relationship in the day to day. And imagine what would it be like to start your day with that person in your life? That's what I mean about how you can kind of get a general sense about it. I personally grew up in chaos and stress with hungover parents who would be miserable where you just felt like a burden to ask for lunch money or if you needed a ride, even as like young kids in grammar school. And there was always this bitter power struggle about who did and who didn't do enough. Like there was like leaving the house was just, I would just leave worried and stressed and miserable. And my family, this is an important note, my family only existed in survival mode. And I woke up that way as a young adult when I sort of even left the home, just woke up in sort of emergency. I imagine that a lot of you maybe grew up like that way too, or you, or you, you wake up that way now, and that's the parallel that I'm trying to draw. So that's an example of a vibe that I want you guys to zero in in, like just say survival mode or conflict or being unprepared. And what did we feel as kids in the mornings with all of those issues going on? So... So that's the first task is to get the childhood history of what it was like and try to write it down and get a sense about what that was like for you. The other task is to create a connection with our inner child and reclaim the start to our day. Do a bit of tracking about what your mornings are like and notice the first thoughts that you have when you wake up like, oh shit, or you know, like that you're in that conflict bump with your boss or you're stressed out about something or you're obsessed about something like sort of like some kind of waiting on a job like that kind of a thing. And this might take a few days to get a sense about what those first thoughts or those first vibes are like. Um, 
but that's what the first negative narrative is that is probably still with us. And you may already know what your vibe is. You may know already like what it's like for you growing up. So let's say in as example that if you wake up overwhelmed and feel unprepared for the day, and there's a theme to that, the result is usually waking up in anxiety, waking up in suffering, and maybe scrambling. Think about how that might have been true for you growing up. In this example, I'd be wondering about, say, chaos or neglect, like that kind of childhood where there wasn't healthy parenting, like a good amount of really ushering the kid throughout their sort of day. Um, and in order to find our adult part, the work that I do is really just two parts. There's the adult part of us and there's our inner child. The inner child can be many different ages, many different variants of it, so that's okay too. Um, and in order to find our adult part, we're mostly in our kids. So when we wake up or with all that stuff in the morning, we're in our kids. So to find the adult part of us, um, that's the part of us that can get it together more and function better. And about the example that I gave about growing up in overwhelm, um, the adult needs to take ownership and of the present life stuff and connect with it, the inner child and sort of say, um, you didn't get any help or parenting growing up, and I'm going to help you about feeling prepared. Let me handle the, the anxiety and the stuff we have to do today. That's too much for you. So that's kind of almost like a statement of the adult taking all this, the present stuff over because the inner child feels like it's all um, up to them. Or when the inner child is running us, we're reacting to the present from the place of the past. So the adult taking it over and sort of to say, let me handle this. If it was our dating life and the inner child is running us in that way and we keep choosing unavailable people, same thing. The adult needs to say, let me take this over. <laughs> uh, wounded inner children shouldn't be sort of dating and I can handle this because it's too much for you. So that's what I mean about ownership. Um, from there, building upon that ownership, we can set up a morning routine to connect with our inner child. Here are some ideas. When you wake up, try to shift out of that negative, dready thought structure and focus on your inner child. Maybe looking at a picture of yourself growing up if you have them or some kind of representation of you as a kid and really try to think about them instead of sort of the upset. Um, and that can be very helpful. Then try to close your eyes or write down on paper, try to come up with this, this or intuit what the inner child feels and what the inner child needs in this day. The inner child is an expert on the past and the adult is an expert on the present. So when you wake up, I'm saying that most likely you're feeling your childhood on some level not the present so much, even if the present is a mess, even if the present is really, really hard, there is still that childhood reactivity to it. So, and whatever comes up, comes up, meaning that like with you intuit that your kid needs sort of a day off, if that's in your wheelhouse, if that's a possibility for you, like, and it's not like you're consistently sort of doing that and get yourself into trouble, maybe take a mental health day. Um, or the kid just needs sort of like, I, kids might even say like, I need something different. You know, you'd be surprised about what inner children thrive on creativity and play. They may need variety in life. So just think about or hold on to what comes up if anything comes up. It's okay if nothing comes up. That's, don't, don't freak out about it. But whatever comes up, comes up. And um, where was I? Try to honor the feeling that comes up and said and send some love to your inner child with the message that you hear them and that they are safe now so all this is could be done while you're still lying in bed so like picturing your kid and trying to intuit what the inner child might need childhood trauma is about the absence of connection and that leads to the absence of connection with self when we're disconnected with ourselves. and there's an example when we're not connected from the adult and the inner child Next, think of a small thing to look forward to in the day that the inner child might like and sort of dialogue internally or on paper about that. Here are some examples. Um, a walk, just the two of you, a walk later after the work is done of the day. 
some kind of treat, um, a comfort meal, something that you like, a burrito, something sweet, and I don't mean, this might be loaded if you guys have food issues. I just mean to like work with what the, the best, healthier choice for you that is still comforting and good enough to the inner child. Some kind of thing to look forward to. Um, a promise to journal after work with the inner child and just reconnect again about how the day was, what's on their mind, what are they anxious about and simply write down those thoughts with your inner child in mind. Or simply like promise a dance party in some way when you get home. Something small. Don't sort of promise that like, I'm gonna totally revamp my romantic life. I'm gonna totally revamp my career when, you know, when we connect again. Trying to just like super small sort of stuff. When my son would go off to kindergarten, we would talk about when I would pick him up about what we do afterward. Maybe we'd make dinner together. Maybe we'd play Legos. Maybe we'd go to his favorite place for pizza that he just sort of loved. That What that did was I wanted him to have that connection with me still in his mind that while going through kindergarten is stressful, we all did it at some point. And to a six-year-old, it's stressful. It's not, it's like, it sounds like luxurious to an adult, but it's not to them. Uh, especially if you were that highly sensitive sort of kid or whatever. Um, and um, just to sort of have that reconnection after school, that connection with having a safe home base with a healthy parent, that's what I'm trying to cultivate in this sort of exercise with you guys. Um, so in both adult and kids need something to look forward to and children thrive on that connection with healthy parents. If, if you know we didn't have them, but we're trying to be that healthy parent for ourselves now. So that's the connection to discuss about and think about in the morning with your inner child. If you go to, another piece to this is that for the adult to take something over or show up more, just as a side note, like if you go to bed too late, too late and you stay up and you wake up exhausted or you don't have your homework prepped or some kind of like work prep going on, um, or you don't have enough clean laundry because you couldn't get it together to have clean laundry in the day. Those are examples that the adult, those are all, first of all, those are all classic inner child running you sort of examples, parenting issues. Um, and just to make small promises on that and, and sort of to address those things as well is what I mean by that is taking them over in order to set your both you and your inner child up for success. So the adult has the capacity to set things up for success. Um, even if you prep your coffee maker the night before is a great small example um, in the morning and you just hit a button because you've done it the night before, I love that. When I'm able to do that for myself, I just, that is like hands down. Well, that's what life is like in your 40s. <laughs> but um, that's, it's the small things. But like when I can do that and I don't have to be grumbly and clean out the grounds and swish out the coffee thing and then get worried about, does this thing need to be cleaned? And you know, all that stuff, it's already done ahead of time. It's a great small example about showing up for yourself. And it goes so far. And lastly, Probably we, I didn't hear this, most likely you didn't hear this. We never heard you're gonna do great today. We never heard you got this. Um, you be yourself at school and take in as much as you can and you're gonna rock that soccer game or that dodgeball game. Maybe, maybe not dodgeball, that's probably where all the trauma came from if you grew up in the 80s like me. Um, so that might be loaded. But kids need that enthusiastic energy. So even if it feels inauthentic to yourself or if it feels like fake it till you make it, try to maybe give yourself that message like you got this, you're gonna do great, you're an amazing person. So that's what I mean. So to recap, part one, you write down what the mornings were like growing up and draw parallels to what they are like now. If you grew up stressed and scrambling, most likely that's not really new for you. And part two is connect with your inner child. Talk about something to look forward to. Uh, make that small promise to be a healthy parent who can soothe and cheerlead. And take over the work stuff that is unmanageable to the inner child. That's what the adult can do to just say, let me handle this, I got this. It goes very, very far. So I hope that that was helpful to you guys. And as always, may you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be peaceful at ease. May you be joyous. And I will see you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye.